Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining today's workshop. Today we're going to talk about augmented reality, virtual reality, and how you can build a 3D app in 15 minutes or less. Thank you everyone for joining. Um, really thankful for the uh, hackathon organizers and club organizers that we're affiliated with um, that helped bring this workshop together. So welcome, welcome, welcome. We're Echo AR. It's a cloud platform for augmented and virtual reality apps, basically providing tools and network infrastructure for developers, companies, and creators like yourself to build 3D applications at scale. Let's get started. I'm going to start by saying hello. Uh, I'm Alan, founder of Echo AR. Um, we're a New York-based company. I did a master's at computer science at Columbia University, uh, specializing in AR, VR, and computer graphics, and my undergrad in computer science and electrical engineering. So a certified nerd and a big believer in the AR, VR space. Now, before we start, let's level set these terms a little bit. I'm going to use them a lot, augmented reality, virtual reality. So let's define them together to understand what they mean. So virtual reality or VR is when everything around you is digital. You're fully immersed in a 3D environment, and everything you see is a computer-generated image, or CGI, that is being projected into your eyes through some kind of headset that occludes what you're seeing. You're controlling the world through your hands or uh, some kind of controller. As opposed to augmented reality, or AR, in which you still see the real world, that world is being overlaid with CGI. Uh, basically injecting digital content into the real world. You're looking at the world through some optical see-through, like a headset or some kind of glasses, or a camera see-through, like a phone or a tablet. Now, a really cool way to understand this, um, these concepts is the amazing movie Space Jam, in which you have Michael Jordan being teleported into Looney Town. Everything around him is a cartoon. He's fully immersed in this digital environment, and he's interacting with the bugs and the other Looney Tunes, again, in a fully digital space as opposed to what we have later in the movie, in which we have the Looney Tunes coming to us, uh, playing basketball in a real court, interacting with Bill Murray and Michael Jordan in our world, basically. So this is the differentiation. It's either us going to Looney Town or Looney Town coming to us. Real world example of this is something that you all know, something like Pokemon Go, when people are running around interacting with digital monsters that are not really there. Or in VR, we have the example of Beat Saber, when you can slash cubes based on the rhythm of the music. Really, really cool use case of augmented and virtual reality. Now, another example of this, something that's really close to my heart, as the pun is definitely intended, this is my thesis project back at Columbia University. We took CT and MRI scans in 2D, converted them into 3D models, put them on um, the smart glasses for the physician to wear, and then the physician was able to see the patient's heart floating above them during surgery. And it was an amazing, amazing experience that basically allowed the physician to get this 3D reference map of the patient's anatomy in real time. But in order to achieve that, I had to do something I really, really hate. And that's waking up really early in the morning. I had to take 2D scans, convert them to 3D models, rebuild the application, and deploy it to these smart glasses for the physician to wear. And that process was so frustrating. It took so much time. And as a developer, I only wanted to do two things. I wanted to manage 3D assets and deliver them to an AR device. And when talking to other developers who are building AR VR applications for retail and shopping and data visualization in games, they all said the same thing. There is no easy way to manage and deliver 3D data, even with all these amazing use cases. But if you think about it, that problem was solved for 2D data. If you want to build a website, you can use something like Heroku as your uh, cloud platform. If you want to build a mobile app, you can use Parse or Firebase as your backend as a service. So we went from web to mobile for so this new type of technology, which is AR, VR, MR, XR, 3D, immersive, call it whatever. And the question has to be asked, who's going to build that cloud platform for this new type of content? And you guessed it, that's Echo AR. So we're a cloud platform for augmented and virtual reality apps, basically providing tools and our infrastructure to allow developers and companies to build 3D applications. Now we're going to dive into more concepts. Um, if you're here through a club or an affiliated hackathon, please use the uh, affiliated link to register. Um, we're going to go through some concepts, then we're going to do a demo, and then we're going to do a live coding workshop. So stick around. So think about it. The same way you don't need to be a web developer to update a blog post. You can drag and drop an image or video. Suddenly, they appear in web and mobile. Or if I'm in New York and you're in California and we're both watching an episode on Netflix, we automatically get the best streaming experience. We translated these concepts into augmented and virtual reality, basically providing you with the way to manage and deliver 3D data and get the best 3D streaming experience. And what's interesting here is this kind of bi-directional connection between content and target. You, as a user, can't move an image or a video on a website, but you can definitely move a 3D couch across the room, and that needs to be updated on the cloud. 
So this is basically what we've built, this kind of content management system and delivery network specifically for 3D content. And as I mentioned, uh, you can register on our website for free or use the affiliated link if you're here through a club or, um, or a hackathon to get uh, premium features for free. So definitely check out that perk if you're here through an affiliated program. Now we're going to transition into a demo. Once you register um, on our website, you're going to get an API key, basically a project key that allows you to build your application. Uh, once you have that, and let me kind of transition my screen, um, you'll get your API key. This is mine. And you'll be able to access the console. Um, on the left, you're seeing the console. And on the right, you're just seeing my phone. So I'm going to start with something super, super simple. I'm going to add some content to the cloud. So here you can add files like images, videos, 3D models, or you can use some of the sample apps that we provide right here, or even use our kind of search engine right here to basically um, look for free 3D models that you can use. Um, but I'm going to start with something simple. I'm going to upload this Empire State Building. It's the same 3D file that you're going to use for 3D printing. We take that file, put it on our cloud, convert, compress, and analyze it so it will work in augmented reality. Once that's done, you can see that it's now in the console. It's right here. Uh, we saw that the original file is OBJ. Our cloud automatically converted that to other file formats. But now that we have it here, um, we can open um, a sample app, for example, that we have here in our downloads page. There's a sample app for Android or iOS. Super, super easy. All you have to do is just uh, open that app, plug in your API key. So let's do that. Data will stream from the cloud to the device. The app itself is just a camera. There's nothing here. The camera is satiated. You're seeing a look at my apartment. And there you go. The Empire State is right here. I can walk around, walk inside. Super, super simple. How cool is that? But now let's say I want to change the content. So what can I do? Instead of rebuilding the application or doing anything technical, I'm going to go back to the console right here, delete the previous entry, upload something else, and it will automatically update in the app and across all platforms out there. So let's see how that works. So I'm going to upload some other building. Same process occurs. We're taking that 3D file, converting and compressing it so it will work anywhere in any platform. Once that's done, opening the exact same app that, again, you can download in the download menu. Let's plug in the key. Again, data streams from the cloud to the device. The app itself is super, super small. Again, it's just a camera. Camera recognizes the floor. And there you go. It's only inside of the Empire State. We have this building. How cool is that? But now what, can I, what if I told you that you can actually see this building in your phone right now? So as I mentioned, we support many different platforms, many different cameras. So what we just saw was a mobile app. But we also support web integration. So you don't have to install anything. For example, we work with a company uh, in the art space that they wanted to people randomly walk into an art gallery, see 3D files around them without installing anything. No worries. You click this button right here, which exposes a um, QR code. You can scan this QR code with your phone right now if you're watching this live, that should work. Um, basically, you just put, open your camera, point at the QR code, it redirects you to a website. You don't have to install anything. Um, most cameras in the iOS and Android have like a built-in QR code scanner, so you can just put your phone in front of it. Then we see this web page opening. We see the building. I can click CNAR. Camera in stain sheets, again, without installing anything. Similar to what we have earlier, camera recognizes the floor. And there we go. We're seeing the same building, but now through a web. How cool is that? So test it out, try around, uh, play around with it a little bit. And all you have to do, again, is just to kind of scan this QR code. Perfect. So we saw web, we saw mobile. Um, let's show you another example of Unity. It's a game engine a lot of developers love to use. So let's see how that works. Uh, later in our coding workshop, we're going to dive into how to use Unity. So same effect, camera opens, recognizes the floor. We're able to put um, some kind of 3D content on top of it. There you go. But now let's say I want to change something. Let's say I want to animate things in real time or change something in the, in the app. So what I can do is I can click this button right here, expose the data panel, and then add some data to it. For example, I can do um, direction equals right. There you go. Suddenly, it starts rotating in real time. How cool is that? Or if, let's say I want to make it two times bigger. I just set the scale, and there you go. Super, super easy to kind of push changes in real time to your application. So we saw um, web, we saw mobile, we saw Unity. Um, let's show another things that we can do with the console. So what we saw so far is everything that we, all the demos that we saw so far are based on uh, surface detection. The camera kind of recognizes the floor or some kind of table or chair and overlays data on top of that. Another um, technology that we support is image recognition. The camera recognizes an image and overlay digital content on top of that. So let's see how that works. 
So if you click this button right here again to generate the QR code, instead of doing see on the floor, choose see on an image, we're going to scan this QR code again. So now it's a different QR code. Put your phone in front of it. You can do it right now. There's no installation needed. It will redirect you to a website. Now keep your phone oriented toward the QR code, and voila, suddenly the camera recognizes the QR code as a target and overlays that building on top of the QR code, kind of like pops out of my screen. How cool is that? You can actually do it with any image and any um, kind of uh, content that you want. So for example, um, let me maybe throw in a video instead. So let me upload a video right here. And now instead of putting it on a floor, I'm going to put it on a specific image. Let me also upload an image. Same process occurs now, but instead of converting 3D models, now we're converting images and videos so they'll work. Um, another thing that you can do is you can upload content, for example, in a specific location. So let's throw in this 3D model in New York. This means that you can build applications. So let's say if it, um, if you open an application in New York, you're going to see the Empire State Building. But if you open it in San Francisco, you're going to see the Golden Gate Bridge. So have location aware Pokemon Go style experiences. So let's give that a sec to upload as well. And then you're able to see the same the content. You're seeing the content here if it comes to the um, the building or the video or the or the kind of 3D model with the location. Images are supported as well. So now let's scan the QR code when it comes to um, kind of uh, custom images. Again, same QR code redirects to a website. You don't have to install anything. Once that's done, you'll see that the camera doesn't recognize the QR code anymore because now the target that it's looking for is the custom um, image that we uploaded. So let's see how that works. So I go here. I'm going to click this image to kind of enlarge it. And voila, suddenly the video overlays the, the kind of uh, image. And I can play it by clicking. I can scale it with my finger, scale it up and down. Super, super cool. How cool is that? This image could be anything you want. It could be your business card. It could be a magazine. And people, when they scan it, they'll see a video of you talking or an advertisement. Perfect. So we saw um, how you can upload videos, how you can upload uh, 3D models, images. Um, let's explore the console a little more and then transition into a coding uh, workshop. So we already saw the downloads pages where you can download the sample apps and our various SDKs. Um, you can switch a theme, which is cool. I like the dark theme. Um, you can also click the help uh, menu, which is really, really crucial. Um, you have a link to our documentation, which is literally a step-by-step -step guide of everything I showed you so far. So you can literally kind of um, show you how to get the API key and how to access the console and how to add 3D models, all with really, really easy GIFs um, that you can kind of explore. Also shows you how to share content. So I'm going to share that link right here uh, in the chat so you can kind of feel um, you can kind of feel free and kind of read through the documentation. Um, another good resource is our um, GitHub page. It is filled with amazing examples of AR VR applications that you can build right now with Echo AR. And if you're here through a hackathon or a club that wants to really build applications really fast, you can kind of use this open source code uh, to build that. So I'm going to share this link, and I'm also going to review some of the use cases. For example, if you want to build an AR portal or a board game, or if you want to do a uh, makeup app, or let's do a, um, what else can we show you? There's so many of them. Uh, use cases that are vary for for art and and um, data visualization and games. Let's do the lecture one. Let's do the living room one. Look how many cool examples we have here for you to use. Let's do the face change and solar system, COVID nineteen. Yeah, let's review a few of these together. So check this out. You can build a portal to a different world using Echo AR and Unity. This is really, really cool, a really cool example that you can kind of literally recreate. Here's another really cool example of a board game that you can build in augment reality, play with your friends. Here's an example of a face makeup being applied that you can do, really, really cool. An election demo that you can have videos, images, and live results of the election kind of being uh, projected in augmented reality or virtual reality. Here's another cool demo of a living room inside a living room that you can kind of binge watch a movie. Here's a face swap um, um, kind of um, demo that you can utilize. Here's a solar system educational app that you can build. Here's a uh, visualizer for COVID-19 spread that later we're going to build together. A remote work demo that you can have holograms of people with like different texts. So many really cool use cases. Here's another example that uses image recognition, kind of bringing images to life. So definitely check it out through our um, kind of GitHub page. It's really, really an important resource. 
Um, another important resource is our Slack channel. If you have any questions for our support team, please click this button right here to join our Slack and ask questions in the support channel. I'll stick around there after the workshop to answer any questions if anyone has any. Um, you can also um, kind of uh, reach out through email or tweet to us. Um, oh, thanks for the great reaction in the chat, everyone. Love it. So let's con like kind of continue exploring the, the console. You can also share 3D models. So basically kind of the same way you would um, do with the QR code. You can kind of scan. You'll automatically get this short link to the uh, 3D model that you can share on social media, share with your friends, send it to them, and they'll be automatically be able to see your content in augmented reality. Other things that you can do is you can obviously kind of manage data. We saw that earlier. So you can manage data per um, 3D model, but you can also kind of manage data across your entire application. For example, we're with the company that built a scavenger hunt murder mystery game, and they had different 3D models associated with different scenes, but they also had data that kind of works across the entire application. Uh, the subscription page is really powerful. It shows you how much, how much bandwidth storage and API calls you're making and allows you to kind of uh, upgrade your plan really, really easily. Again, if you're here through an affiliated program, um, you're going to get one of the paid tiers for free. So definitely check out that perk. The location page is really cool. Shows you distribution of content. Remember, we added that Fox in New York. You can monitor the servers that are supporting your application and the kind of distribution of content. Uh, the security page is really cool. If you're working as a team, you can add people to your uh, project. So they'll be able to kind of contribute and manage the same content as you do. Insights is a really powerful page, shows you how your content is being used. Um, you can see, for example, we kind of use the apartment building, so we see a spike in usage. You can monitor user engagement and how your kind of project is doing. Um, in users, you can see the distribution of users around the world, where are your users coming from, how they're kind of interacting with your content. And here we have other pages that are really cool. The tutorials page is really, really uh, powerful, allows you to kind of have some frequently asked questions from our documentation. You have the link to our documentation as well. And a lot of kind of open source example that we reviewed from our GitHub. And again, that kind of link to our uh, GitHub page as well. So really, really, really cool stuff that you can kind of, uh, that you should kind of go through and look at. The inspiration page is a really awesome page. It has a lot of use cases and an amazing, amazing use cases about augmented and virtual reality and applications that people built using Echo AR, like the art installation that I mentioned or the murder mystery game. So many really amazing projects, like the uh, project that we did for Verizon 5G around streaming AR. Really, really cool stuff around space and medicine and surgery and advertising and games and shopping and, and even in, there you go, we have some projects that people recently submitted around COVID-19, um, projects that use surface detection, image recognition, really amazing stuff. Go through this page to get inspired, but you can build like this mass visualizer right here. Really, really cool stuff. And if you build something with Echo AR, let us know and we'll feature you on this page as well. Um, it's a really, really cool way to engage the community that again is also available on our Slack channel to kind of um, talk to people and see what the other people are building, how they can help. Perfect. So um, we let's recap a little bit and then I'll transition into a coding uh, demo. So now we saw how you can upload content, how you can manage content, how you can use speedy models, how you can use videos, how you can use images. Now let's do um, a kind of transition into a coding demo uh, using Unity. So um, you can you download our Unity SDK right here. It's a file that you can enter get into Unity, um, which you can download for free as well. So this is Unity. It's a game engine uh, that a lot of developers love to use. It's free to use, and you can download that. And after that, download our SDK and you get that in. You're seeing what you're seeing right now is kind of uh, the Unity default um, view. We have an empty scene right here. It just has the Echo AR SDK. I'm going to click this game object right here um, and going to plug in my API key to uh, the, the game engine. So all I did is just plug in the API key. I'm going to press play. Data will start streaming from the cloud to the game engine, similar to what we had earlier, that the data kind of streamed from the cloud to the phone. And voila, all our content is automatically here. So I'm going to delete the video because it's kind of playing in my ear. But we see the building and we see the um, video of the fox. Check out how I just deleted the kind of video from the console automatically and disappeared from the game engine. Um, we see that the um, building is still rotating as we had before. Maybe also let's move the fox a little bit because it's occluded by the building. There we go. Um, so how cool is that? Like all the data is right here. When I stop Unity from playing, everything disappeared. 
so basically remember that you're going to bring content from the cloud. Nothing actually persists on memory, which means that your apps that you're going to build will be super, super small because the assets are not preloaded in the build. But when I replay Unity, kind of replay the application, data again will stay from the cloud to the game engine. But check this out. The building is still rotating. The fox is 10 feet away. So what we have here is what we call a stateful content management system, basically remembering the state of your application and saving it to the cloud. But now, what happens if I want to do any modifications? So what I, let's kind of delete this building right here, and let's put the fox back in the middle. So what's cool about Echo AR is that every 3D file, even this Arctic Fox right here, has a custom behavior script attached to it. It's a C-sharp um, script in Unity format. So we have it right here. Um, and it basically allows you to add any feature that you want through coding. Um, so if you know C-sharp, that's perfect. But any other object-oriented language is good as well. Um, so let's review it together. So in a Unity script, you have two main functions that are really important. The start function, evident by its name, happens when you start the application and the update function that happens every single frame. Remember, you're coding in 3D now. That means that there's like a video rendering, there's a scene being rendered. Um, and this function kind of happens every single frame. It's like a while true loop or a kind of infinite for loop that always kind of runs in the background. Because, so, because of that, you need to make sure that this kind of um, function is well optimized and remember your CS fundamentals. If this function hangs or gets stuck, your entire application will hang or get stuck. So let's see what we have here in the start function. So we're adding some script to the game object that will handle the remote transformations. And then we have this useful snippet of code that says, do I have any additional data? If so, do I have any additional data called name? And if that's the case, set the name of the object to that name. So let's see how that works in practice. So if I set the name to the fox, we already know how to add data. This is free text. We can add whatever we want. Let's call the fox Kevin. I'm going to press play, data will stream from the cloud to the game engine, and voila, now we have Kevin, the fox, right here. How cool is that? A simple, simple feature, obviously, but a way to show that you can throw in any data and parse it any way you want in the script. This means that you can remotely control um, if flows, enable, disable features, really limited only by your imagination. Now if I change the name to something else, Nothing happens. Why is that? Because that snippet of code only happens in the start function. So if I restart the application, we'll see the data again. We'll stream from the cloud to the game engine. And now we have Sam the Fox. But what happens if I want this to happen every single frame and happen basically in real time? So you've guessed it. So we're going to move this snippet of code from the start function to the update function. This means that now every single time we're going to ask, do I have any additional data? If I do, do I have a name? And if that's the case, set that name uh, to the name of the Fox. So let's see how that works. Restart the application to kind of recompile the code. Data is changed from the cloud to the game engine, and voila, now we have Sam the Fox. If I change to something else, bam, automatically it's Kevin. How cool is that? So again, really, really simple examples to show that you can use data however you like and change that remotely. Now let's transition to a more complicated example. Um, I'm going to delete the Fox right here. And going to upload um, kind of my own um, content from my uh, computer. So let's see that. We're going to recreate the COVID example that I showed you earlier. So I'm going to throw in a 3D file now. Um, and I'm going to also attach a CSV, some kind of an Excel file that has all these kind of keys and values already pre-attached. When you do that, Echo AR will automatically parse um, these data points and will attach them to the uh, content that you're uploading. So it's a really kind of cool way to um, add data without manually um, kind of typing it in. So let's upload that. Uh, while that's happening, I'm going to kind of um, swap the custom behavior script under the hood, and we're going to review it together. So let's replace the custom behavior script and go back. Perfect. So now the custom behavior script is much more interesting. Um, we have an array of continents. We have some kind of dictionary, a data structure. Um, the start function looks exactly the same, but look how interesting the update function looks now. It has so much more depth. So we're asking, do I have any additional data? If so, do I have um, the data point of scale? If that's the case, parse that into a number. Then iterate over all continents. If I have an entry uh, that matches the name of the continent, parse that as a number for the number of COVID cases in that continent. Then if you have a graph, set the size of the graph to that kind of number of cases. Uh, and if not, create a graph by creating a cylinder, give it a color, give it a name, uh, give it a location. 
um, get, add some text to it. Um, and if you don't have any data points, you just delete the graph. So let's see how that works in practice. So we already have the Earth kind of spinning right here. Um, we see all the data that we had earlier kind of already uh, attached to the 3D file. And now let's press play. Data again streams from the cloud to the game engine, and voila, how cool is that? We have the Earth spinning. We have all these auto-generated graphs based on data. And now we can kind of have this kind of AR, VR uh, application specific here on Code Visualizer. As I mentioned, you can take this code as is from our GitHub. It's totally open source. You can play around with it, um, recreate your own application if you want to. I think it's a really good ex exercise to kind of expand on this uh, and kind of um, create your own application with this. Um, but let's see how we can change data in real time. So let's say I want to change Antarctica from 1 to 8. Bam, suddenly it shifts in real time. If I delete Antarctica, it disappears. So another really simple example, again, to show that you can kind of change and manipulate data in real time. A really cool exercise could be taking this application, expanding on it, connecting our API to the WHO, to the World Health Organization, and then have these numbers change in real time as opposed to kind of um, plugging them in manually. Perfect. Um, so we just um, saw how you can build applications um, in Unity with Echo AR, and let's recap right now. So going back to the slides right here. So what do we see so far? So we saw how you as developers can choose any platform. It's mobile, web, um, Unity. We saw everything in the beginning was really no code. So even if you're not that technical, you can drag and drop 3D models, create AR applications really, really quickly. We build, store, and deliver the 3D content that you upload to every device out there in the world. You as a developer save time and money. Content creators need no technical skills. And companies can send data all over the world with Echo AR. We talked about use cases, and we saw the inspiration page that is filled with amazing examples um, of AR and VR. We talked about surgery and ads and data visualization and shopping and games. I am so excited to see where you're going to build with Echo AR. So make sure to submit that um, and, and send it to our team so we'll be able to feature you as well. Super excited to see where you're going to build. A little bit more about us as a company. We won a bunch of awards, and we're backed by some of the most amazing investors in the country, like Reimagine Ventures and Techstars and Verizon. And we're featured in all these amazing tech events that hopefully we'll be able to see uh, you there in person uh, when things go back to normal. We love to say that we inspire people to build applications across all platforms. So start building. This is definitely the time to build AR VR applications with Echo AR. Make sure to register today on our website or use the affiliate link that you get um, from um, an affiliated program. Thank you so much for being in this workshop. Really, really appreciate everyone's time. Hope you've learned a lot. I definitely enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Feel free to reach out. Stay safe, healthy, and sane during these weird times and start building applications. This is the time to build. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a good one.